that question. Um, first and foremost, the investments that we are seeing in oil and gas are probably the single largest investment this country has seen. You're talking about 20 billion US dollars being invested over a period of about five years in this country, in this economy, just in the oil and gas sector. So that would definitely underpin the reason for the focus on oil and gas. And one of the things that we are doing as a chamber is to ensure that we have a lot, we have maximum value retention through national content. We want the ordinary Ugandan, the ordinary Ugandan company to benefit from the oil and gas. But more than that, we want the community members, the people who live not very far away from the Albertine Graben where the oil is being uh, explored and is going to be coming out of, they need to benefit from the sector. But that notwithstanding, of course, the extractive industry in Uganda is vast. It's not just oil and gas. But we have other minerals as well. We have gold. We have the um, um, uh, other minerals that are also uh, important for this economy. And definitely, as a country, with the passing of the Minerals Act of 2022, we have prospects that that sector as well, the mineral subsector, will also uh, boom, just like oil and gas. Uganda is a mineral wealth country, very wealthy, and uh, the geological surveys indicate that uh, there is a great potential for over 20 categories of minerals that we know of so far, but we do believe that there is even potential for a lot more. Uh, the third national development plan that ran, uh, ran from 2020-21 to 2024-25 uh, prioritize the development of five minerals, okay? That is iron ore, gold, copper, phosphates, and the development minerals. So when I talk about the development minerals, I'm referring to marble, silica, sand, aggregate, and limestone. So, um, and the advancement of efforts are certain that commercial viability and data will be available for all these minerals so that we can be able to attract investment. Of course, there has been challenges. And one of the challenges is actually having uh, all the requisite information about how much and the commercial viability of all the minerals in uh, Uganda. We have not invested enough in determining the quantities of each mineral. And uh, we will get a picture as we go. Government has done quite a bit. Uh, government has allocated this year, this financial year, about 54.3 billion Uganda shillings. Uh, that is up from the previous financial year, which was 49 billion. And this is for quantifying the country's mineral deposits to a certain their value before beneficiation. So, uh, we think this is a great cause. Of course, more is required, but we want to be able to start from here. And as a chamber, we work with government to support with government to be able to sell out the, what is there, to, 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 to uh, inform the world of what is available so that they can come and invest in Uganda. Of course, invest and do the processing here in Uganda so that we export finished products more First of all, we thank government for passing the uh, Minerals Development Act, uh, the Mining and Minerals Act of 2022. Um, what that act did 
did, amongst other things, what that act did is recognize the place of artisanal miners or the small-scale miners. Those miners that you would say have not been benefiting as much from the minerals that they are either working in or they are either, you know, they, they, they are close to. And so with the, with the recognition of the artisanal miners, as a chamber of mines and petroleum, our focus is to be able to work with them, to be able to help them uh, get to the place where they are benefiting. Uh, they are practicing safe mining uh, methods, all right? Using safe uh, mining methods, uh, doing all that they can do uh, under quality, health, uh, safety, and environmental uh, systems at their level because we are interested in their health, we are interested in them benefiting, we are interested in them uh, being able to access markets, we are interested in them being able to, to, to benefit from the minerals. And uh, as it's, it's been a very, very good uh, thing that has happened. Of course, there are some gaps. And I know with time, government will, be, will definitely be able to bridge the gaps in terms of the act. Uh, but it's a very good, good act, very good laws and the regulations that were passed, uh, that were published recently uh, to be able to enforce what is uh, in that act. Uh, we are really optimistic that we are going to turn the curve when it comes to Uganda developing its mineral potential. From a governance perspective, it's a commendable effort. And uh, we appreciate the stand of government and the stand of the president where his drive is to ensure that there is value addition in country so that we get maximum benefit when we export. And so the ban on export of ore uh, or export of a concentrate does make sense in that regard. Um, our stand as a Chamber of Mines and Petroleum is to engage with government to be able to come up with a practical roadmap that will stimulate the growth of the sector in a sustainable manner. That you're able to work out a roadmap that is mineral specific to be able to work with whoever is interested in investing okay in a particular mean uh, how they can work, get to the place of value addition and how they recoup their investment as they work towards that place of uh, um, um, full value addition here in Uganda before they can uh, export the finished We are making commendable progress when it comes to the Extractives Industry Transparency Initiative that ensures that we are able to keep track of um, all the activities in the extractives industry, the revenues in terms of either taxation, royalties, 
sales and whatever it, uh, it takes. Uh, the, this transparency initiative, uh, which we as the Chamber of Mines and Petroleum are part of, uh, is geared to making sure that all this information is collated and synchronized from the different sources. You're talking of Uganda Revenue Authority, Bank of Uganda, Uganda uh, Registration Services Bureau, and the rest. And to be able to say, okay, this is what we are uh, uh, extracting, this is what we are uh, exporting, these are the taxes that the country is benefiting. And then once we have accurate data, then we can be able to say, how do we improve these sectors? How do we up this? And so good progress is being done there. As a country, we are up for uh, audit uh, by the International Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative. And, uh, as, and some of the things we are doing in preparation for all that includes awareness that the, the players in the mining sector, the players in the oil and gas sector, are actually aware of the requirements and not just aware but fulfilling their requirements in terms of providing uh, the information that is required to make sure that this transparency initiative uh, goes a long way in succeeding and benefiting well. Lastly. Worried. Uganda is working steadily and firmly to achieve fast oil in 2025. Um, the international oil companies that are also members of the Chamber of Mines and Petroleum are constantly putting out the information that is required in terms of progress, in terms of opportunities that exist. Because like I said, for us our vantage point is how do we ensure maximum value retention in country? And uh, from what is taking place, yes, there might be uh, uh, um, different voices from all over the world, but as a country, with our partners, the IOCs, and uh, there is progress being made, there is commitment to making sure that we achieve that target. And I am confident that we will achieve it. Um, ECO, the East African Crude Oil Pipeline, is also on course. Um, work is taking place where there is need for compensation. A big percentage of it, over 90%, has been done. Uh, the rest uh, is being worked out with the affected persons. Um, the design is completed. The mapping of where it's going to go, where it's going to pass. Uh, the next things will definitely be construction. You have the terminal at Tanga in Tanzania that uh, is being worked on as well. So, I have no doubt in my mind that as a country we'll get there. You see, as the Chamber of Mines and Petroleum, we run a media campaign, the 90 Days of Oil and Gas, that we're running even right now, to be able to pass on as much information uh, and the positive information, the right information about the sector. Now, um, definitely, in the wisdom of His Excellency the President, the refinery has got to be done, and the refinery will be done. Uganda National Oil Company that is mandated to make sure that this happens is on course. Yes, there has been some uh, uh, um, um, setbacks here and there, but with every plan, they had alternates in place. And some of the things that are happening on that front are to ensure that we have a refinery up in time. And we will have the refinery up in time. I'm very confident about uh, the, 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 the work that UNOC is doing on that, on that end. And constantly, actually on a quarterly basis, they're having supplier engagements to give these uh, you know, 
updates on what is happening. And we encourage Ugandans, participate, be there, get to know what is happening. These are our resources as Ugandans. And at the end of the day, we're going to benefit from them. And when we talk about national content, we're saying, look, we want Ugandan companies to be the suppliers. We want Ugandan companies to be the contractors, to be part and parcel of all this that is happening so that they can make money from the oil and gas in this phase before you even start getting the oil out and selling it to Ugandans after refining it. Okay, so, yep, they're, they're going to continue uh, uh, um, work to make sure that we hit our timelines, we hit our deadlines, but we are calling on Ugandans to be involved. Thank you.